afternoon. Here, but I don't know where it was Maybe you guys got On behalf of the Carrier family, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. It's, of course, a very sad occasion why we meet. A very special lady, close friend, and family to all of us that's here today. We're going to open in prayer. Lord, we thank you that you really do love each person here. And you love the Carrier family. And we do pray, Lord, for Lawrence and his boys and the special, special ladies, the special grandchildren, Lord. And Father, I just have a very heavy heart when I think of Pat. Such a wonderful lady really, really love people. And hearing a lot of the stories already of how she was there for so many of, of her son's friends when they come over to eat and spend time playing football. And Lord, she was just a, a great football mom. But she was just a great mom. She was just a special lady. And we pray, Lord, that you would comfort each person here Lord, with the comfort that only you can. And Father, as we think of her today, as we say goodbyes to her today, Lord, that you would wrap your loving arms around each person here. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Family asked me to share a few words, and I want to read a story in the, in the, in the Bible in the book of John, Jesus goes to a funeral, and we read these words in John chapter 11. So when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. Skipping to verse 32, then Mary came where Jesus was and saw him. She fell down at his feet and said, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? You know, as we look at these words, there are questions in these verses. The question, why? The same question we have for Pat. Why? She was so young. Why? Why? And I've learned as a pastor, I don't have a lot of answers to why. I don't understand sometimes why God allows certain things to happen. There's someone that's such a special person as Pat, so caring for people, so loving to her family. You see some of these pictures of her with the grandchildren, and it's hard. 
But I think sometimes what we need to realize is that sometimes that we, we look at life we look at life from a very limited focus of our life here on earth and how short it is. And when we look at it from eternal perspective, from God's per perspective, perhaps it helps us a bit, a bit, when we think of the questions why. But I want to look at three things that we can learn from these verses. The first one is that Jesus' timing is perfect. You know, as I came to visit the family, and, and I do want to make a comment that I've, in all the years of ministry, Lawrence carried her, he, there was only one time I went there and he wasn't there. He was there, he slept there, he stayed there, he was there for his wife. But you know, we prayed. And, when, and what I try to do as a pastor when I go visit people is I try to be there, and I try to be there fairly often, but I try not to stay a long time because the, the family wants to be there with their family member, and I've noticed this, that this is an important thing. But I like to be there to pray with the one who's suffering, and I like to be there for the family. And as I was doing this, we were praying, and we were praying for Pat, and we were praying for perfect timing, for God's timing. And you know, I will share with you what happened the last, the last day. As I said, I would often come and have short visits. The, the visits, the last day I came, and and you could just tell, with with Lawrence's two sons were there, we could just tell, her time was short. Her time was short, and we were praying. She'd been suffering so much. She had such pain in her legs. Lawrence could tell you, it's so so sad. She suffered so much. But we were praying for perfect timing, and we were praying, and often what I do as a pastor is, is if I'm ever ever there when, when, when a family member passes away, I always have to try to have my Bible with me so I can read Psalm 23, because I found those words to be so comforting at that time. And it had the, the verses ready. And as we watched Pat's breaths become less and less and missing some we knew it was closer and closer and and then when her boy started to cry it was time to read psalm 23 and i read it and then there was a moment of silence and we're going to play this song in a few minutes but lawrence looked at me and said can you bring amazing grace up on your phone and as we played the song, before the song was finished, Pat had passed away. She was gone. Jesus' timing is perfect. You know, Jesus was asked to go to see this, this friend of his that's dying. And, and we read these words, you know what he says? It says, so when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. That doesn't even make sense. And so many times it doesn't make sense. And I and I and I, I learned something when I was studying this uh, uh, a number of weeks ago. Here I learned something that Jesus actually, when he went there, he said to his disciples, "I'm going there he, for the glory of God. This sickness is 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 not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it." And when he got there. He purposely stayed away so he could raise Lazarus four days. And in that culture, the Jewish people believed that the soul of the person hovered over the body for three days. Jesus waited longer. So it was absolutely impossible. And he raised Lazarus. His timing is perfect. And, you know, we often don't understand what he's doing. Why do you take this loved one from me? And I, like I said, I don't have an answer to you. But I do know we have a God that loves us. And he cares for you. Which brings us to our second point. Jesus is here to comfort you. His comfort is real. He's here to comfort you. We read the shortest verse in the Bible, and it's the words, Jesus wept. There's some that believe he wept for half an hour. 
I do know this, that in the Jewish culture, that, that when they said they comforted them, what they would do is they would wail. And it's not like us. We, we come there and we try to be silent and we come there and we try to hold someone's hand. And, and sometimes I found the best thing to do is just, do, do, just don't say anything. Just cry with people. Because that's the best way we can comfort them. But you know, Jesus, he knew he was about to raise this man from the dead, yet he wept with Mary and Martha. Why? Because he cares for us. You know, we don't see him here today, but Jesus is here, and he's here to cry with each one of you. Because he loves you, and he's here to comfort you. And Pat suffered so much, and you know, we've all faced that dilemma. I remember when my mom passed away, and I was, I was sad, I was very sad, but I was also happy for her. She's not suffering anymore. And the Lord is with us, and he understands that. He understands that pain that we go through, that suffering, that pain. And this brings us to our final point. Jesus is here to give you hope for eternal future, for your eternal future. Jesus is here to give you hope for the eternal future. And we read these words in Revelation 21. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There should be no more death, no sorrow, nor crying. There should be no more pain for the former things have passed away. Can you imagine a place where there's no more pain? No more sickness. No more death. And as we think of things from an eternal perspective, the Lord is here to give us hope for an eternal future. And, and, and one thing I want to share with you, um, as I spent some time with, with Pat in the, through the years, I remember when Stevie Baggs was here in Tisdale, he was our first rider that came, and I remember Pat carrier walking forward when Stevie ba Bags asked if you want to have a relationship with Jesus. And I remember that day. And I was there when we would do the live service and Pat was there and, and, and we're talking about making your peace with God and the importance of this and Pat was there. And I remember talking with her and praying with her and talking with her and praying with her through the Lord's Prayer. And it says right in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against you. And we talked about some very personal things that I will not share here right now. But she talked about some things and about the importance that we forgive each other and that we think that Jesus forgives us. And I know Pat had faith in the Lord. And Jesus came to give us eternal life. Jesus said to Mary, to Martha that day, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me. I am the resurrection of life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Jesus is here to give you an eternal hope in your future. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you love each person here. And Lord, that you are here to comfort each one of us. Lord, it is so very, very hard to say goodbye to Pat. I remember so many days watching the tornadoes play and Pat was cheering away as Andre was running over and people were all over his back and Keenan was blocking for him and it was just fantastic. And then we would go and we'd watch the hilltops play and Pat was there and Lawrence was there and we were all there having fun. And Lord, those are great memories. And it's hard, Lord, when we think we're gone now. But we thank you that she's with you. We thank you, Lord, that she is with you. And that we can take hope and peace in that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have... Uh, 
Yes, we're going to listen to Amazing Grace over here. Patricia is survived by her loving husband of 43 years, Lawrence, sons Anthony and wife Jill, Nolan and wife Allison, Brandon and wife Cassandra, Lucas, fiance, or wife Nikki, Keenan, fiance, Angela, grandchildren. Did I say something? Wrong? No, that's <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Grandchildren Mich Michaela, Emma, Mackenzie, Ethan, Grayson, Alexander, Odin, Mother Anne Gr Grahalski, Aunt Sylvia, Rouse, Brother Rick and Judy Grahalski, Sisters Marcia, Rod Postle, Postal. <laughs> Postal, sorry. Jackie and Rob Atkinson. Several nieces, nephews, brothers and sister-in-laws, cousins, as well as many friends. The Carrier family would like to thank you for your kind words and support during this difficult time. Don't grieve for me, for now I'm free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard his call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, to play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found that peace at the close of the day. If my party has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss, and yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish you the sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I've savored much. Good friends, good times, and a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seemed all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your heart and share with me. God wanted me now. He set me free. We're going to read a, a, a couple of tributes. This is, this is one from Corinne and Agnes. Corinne and Agnes. Our friendship with Pat has taken us on a 25 your journey filled with countless adventures and many fond memories. As mothers, we shared the common bond of raising our sons. What forged our friendship was ringside seat we shared watching our sons grow up together as best friends. Keenan, Jordan, and Ian developed friendships from, from day one and so did their mothers. As you can only imagine the belly laughs we shared as three navigated ch childhood. I become becoming teenagers and then adults. If only we had a nickel for each time we heard Pat say, Oh, Keenan. <laughs> Over the years, it was extremely evident that Pat was devoted to her children and their needs were placed before her own. She celebrated every achievement in the lives of her children and grandchildren and very naturally extended that pride to the special events and accomplishments of her children's friends as well. Pat and Lawrence's home became a second home to our sons. It was not uncommon for both Jordan and Ian to come home amazed by the wonderful food Pat would serve. Pat's taco salad became a staple in all four households. As we tried to craft her spectacular recipe, but always fell a little short. As the boys reminded us that our version didn't live up to Pat's standard. Pat's puffed wheat cake and her chili also became famous when she initiated the after-game supper program for the Tenados football team. 
No matter how late the game went or how cold it was outside, Pat rallied all the moms to make sure the boys were fed after each game. It was common practice for Pat to be front and center, congratulating each player as they came through the line to get food. Pat's love for her children, her grandchildren, and friends extended to everyone who was fortunate to meet her. Her genuine interest in her, the well-being of others was admirable as she embraced all people with kindness, words of support, and generosity. Her hugs were given freely and were always made heart to heart. Her warm embrace was, was a reminder that there is much to be grateful for, that it is important to cherish those you love with love from Agnes Anchorage. Very beautifully written. Thank you. And this um, this tribute is from Keenan. Mom would have never realized it, but she leaves behind one of the biggest legacies of anyone I will ever know. The kindness she showed and the care that she had for others will live on in Dad, in me, in all my brothers, and in all our families. The way we treat people and care for people all comes from her. Her problems never mattered. She always, she was always more concerned with others. She truly was a mother to all she put, she put as she put others first. Even when she was in the hospital, she would still yip at me for coming in without a jacket. <laughs> she cared more about me getting a cold than she was what she was going through. Mom was always an angel through and through because of the selflessness she had and the compassion that she showed to everyone who crossed paths with her. Mom didn't just raise me and my four brothers, she was a mom to the entire generation. For four years, I was the only son left at home after the rest graduated, yet it was very rare that it was just my mom, dad, and me at the supper table. Friends would constantly be in our home. They would be forced to sit down to enjoy a meal made from scratch, even if they had eaten supper at their own place. She cared for my friends like they were her family, and that's what they all became. As the youngest, I got to see hundreds of different faces join our family in our home. Mom made it so wel welcoming for each and every person that walked through our door. When I look back, sure we butted heads, I mean, but I have never seen anything but a super mom. Someone who always had my back and always and was always there for me. She was my biggest fan from being a booster mom when I played for the Tornadoes, to traveling across the country, to drink out of the Canadian Bowl when I played for the Hilltops, to watching me compete for the collegiate level for the Rams, and finally supporting me as I followed my passion and became a coach. She was always there cheering me on, always along the way and quite frankly everything i did i did for her because all i ever wanted to do was make that super mom proud of me i love you mom very well written we're gonna open the mic now and if you have a short little story, a little story, or a, or a little longer story, we want to have the have you uh, have you share that story. Now I can either come up to you and bring you the mic, or you can come up here. So the option is yours. Okay. While you're thinking, Lawrence is going to share his tribute. <coughs> Hard, hard to follow those two. They stole all my material. So, yeah. Anyways, bear with me. Uh, 
Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, just going to try to read my writing. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. From all our family, everyone here, for all the cards, the calls, the meals, the thoughts, the prayers. To all the people that would, and all the people that could not make it today, from the bottom of our hearts, help us. Pat's looking down and telling me to suck it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, Grandma's going to make me cry. <laughs> From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for helping us share Pat's life. A good friend of mine just said, breathe and it'll be okay. So I'll take a few deep breaths. <clears throat> Thank you for caring and honor who she is. Um, I stay away from saying who she was because she's still here with us, so she is. There will be tears. But mostly there will be love, hugs, and laughter. Today we, <clears throat> today we celebrate Pat's life as a daughter, a niece, a sister, a wife, mother, and past greatest joy, a grandmother. In, in our new path, we honor all the family members that have passed before us, Pat's grandparents, and boys will know what this means, uh, tap, tap, shady, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's from the cat's, uh, cat's grandmother, right? So, um, uh, Pat's, Pat's, Pat's dad, Stan, Pat's uncles and aunts, and my dad and my brother, Paul. Uh, Pat's grandkids will now light a candle in honor of them. Pat's passage is just another chapter in our life. We must carry on in her honor who she is with joy, love, forgiveness. We will make her proud with selfless acts of kindness. not something we give or get it is something that we nurture and and grow we can only love others as much as we love ourselves in the Bible there is what they call a gap love it is the highest form of love selfless sacrificial unconditional love that it persists no matter the circumstances this is who Pat is there's uh, there's all these signs that she is she is near just open your hearts your souls and your minds you'll feel her presence presence be it a butterfly feathers or last few days it's been a rabbit for me for some reason but Pat is near talk talk with her um, ask her questions feel her presence feel her in your heart her spirit will always be with us <laughs> Um, Pat's family, mom and grandma G, and is the hardest working person I know. She's the energizer bunny of our family. Mom, mom symbolizes what true love is. Patricia truly loved you. I'm sorry, 
we're supposed to be celebrating, right? Anyways, Rick, Rick, Marcia, and Jackie, um, Pat's three siblings. Uh, we will continue to live and share past life at all our family gatherings. Uh, my family, my mother, Lorette, in PA, in home in PA, 90 year old, and she, she's truly a lady now that tells you like it is, tells you what she thinks. If you like it or not, she's gonna tell you, so I love that about her. <laughs> my sister Evelyn and her boys in Bonneville, she is a true fighter, she's been through lots. And my brothers, which are here today, Danny and Janet, Grant and Eileen, Guy and Doreen, David and Rosie, from DC, Rosie, David, and, uh, and all, all of their families, thank you for your love and support. And, and uh, I have a cousin here from uh, Ontario, Gilbert, Hello, Gilbert. Thank you so much. Uh, our boys and their families, Anthony and Jill, Michaela, Mackenzie and Emma, Nolan, <coughs> Ali, Xander, Golden, um, Brandon, Cassie, Ethan and Grayson, uh, Lucas and Nikki and their, their crew at the LN Stables. I was going to list them all, but I don't think I know all their names. So. And Keenan and Angel and future grandkids. <laughs> no pressure. I cannot uh, tell you what they, they, they meant to me and mom. And, and have all of them, all of them come together to to honor her life, all this and their work. Like this is all their work, the boys, right? So the boys and the girls, right? So I so appreciate it and arranging everything. So all of you are, you can all have part of part of part of mom your life. Mom will always be be there for us and we will continue to make sure all of her grandkids will truly know and love her. To our extended family, cannot cannot count how many boys and girls that have come to our home. Many a meal was meal and laughter were shared. Our home was always open. There was times I'd leave in the morning and there would be boots or shoes in the, in the, and I have no idea who was in our basement. But <laughs> our home was always open and Pat would always have a meal or a treat on hand. We had boys eat a full meal at, at their home and come and eat at our home again. Uh, we always seemed to have chocolate milk and apple juice for some of Keenan's friends. We got to know and share many a, a visits, both to the boys and their families. We think of the Lamas, the Salisbury's, and the Lalongs, and many, many more. Football is our life. From when Anthony started playing and continue on with Keenan, with his TMF and the Tisdale Tornadoes. Uh, Patricia was the football mom, always there, always, always cheering, always giving support and getting uh, stinky hug hugs after game. <laughs> you look at all those guys on the end there, Pat's this high and they're six feet and when they hug, she hugs, she gets the, the big whip of the big place, right? So, uh, we think of Andre LeBron, uh, they're playing probably right now in Edmonton. We think of Andre LeBron and as one of our so, We spent many, many a drive, a drive and games together and uh, a true friend for Keenan even if they made lots of fun news. So. Uh, be it tis or tornadoes, hilltops or rams, we still have many fond memories and of watching and cheering our boys on. We cherish all the times and friends that we have made over the years with football. Mom and I are so proud of the program that Keenan has coached and has made with, oh, Keenan and his coaches have made for the young boys and girls at, at Tizel Tornado. Our family would like to acknowledge all of the hospital staff and new market place staff, uh, the nurses and staff, one of the best ones are here today, so, and Joe. The names and the, the, 
the nurses and staff at the hospital and the home more than more than agree. I know Pat had some long talks with some of the nurses that night, sharing her stories and just being a mom to all. She truly was a mom to all, no matter no matter how bad. No, no, no matter how bad mom was feeling, she just cared and loved everyone with her gentle ways. To all the residents and family that we got to visit and share with, we extend all of our love. I think of Margaret and Pat and Phyllis always taking the time at the home with Pat when she had her spasms and holding her hand. We got to just about that. We got to witness the the true love Pat had especially with Susie. Pat at the end of the day would always, they would always kiss each other's hand and Pat would always tell her that she loved her. Pat's true calling was helping others and comfort to everyone in the home, always caring. And then just all the people that shared meals and came to visit and just just pray for us i just thank you we love you mom miss you thank you for those wonderful words as we close i want to um, close with a very familiar chapter the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for each person that came here. Each person that has a very special relationship with Pat. We thank you for the words that were shared about her we thank you for her life and lord we pray father that you would continue to be there for lawrence and for the whole family and for each one of us that miss Pat so very much we thank you lord that you are a god of comfort and we pray for that comfort now for each one and we pray, Lord, even as we have some refreshments, Lord, that you'd bless, bless these refreshments as, as, as we have conversations around these tables about Pat's life, Lord, that you'd bless each one. And we thank you, Lord, for your love and your goodness. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace.